Good morning, Rabbi Sai. Ah, live from Farakway in some basement somewhere. Yvaldi, I've been traveling today. Made it. I should have brought it to Bar Park. Traveled back to Farakway. Everything's been Yvaldi. And here we are. And we're going to learn from Tyra. Lili Nishmas, Ili Boyrosi, Nusbas Mordechai. Today she is sponsored by Chaim in honor of the belly. I know you are. Chaim, I know. I don't, I don't. Here we go with the bed, with everything. In Valdek, in a basement, operating solo. But you know what? Bezer Shem, when I get back to Eretz Yisrael, if they let me in, I'm probably going to have to go a few days into quarantine. I have to get used to this again. Like, like the good old days. So we have a sponsor, Chaim, that finally uh, somebody told me who he is. I don't think I've ever met him. I'd like to get to know him. Yishkoi Chaim. By Chaim Fix, Lili Nishma, Sipoira, Chilo, Bas, Aaron, Ve, Chano. Lili Nishma, Sarab, Yehuda, Moshe, Pasio, Ben, Chano, Zeich, Tzadik, Chosh, Levroch. Lili Nishma, Sarab, Ben, Shulam. Hmm, it's not spelled. Yeah, but that's, uh, it's maybe five-ish. Lila Nishma is a Rav Meshulam Five-ish Segal. That's how I'm going to guess. Ben Arav Mordechai. Parasha Choydash. Michael Ben Mela, in memory of his mother, the Varifegah Bas Shmuel, Zuchon Levrocha, and father in law Menachem Mendel Ben Elchon, Zuchon Levrocha, and the merit to make it to Umar Rosh Hashanah this year. Shukoyach. So, I have to find this email. This is an extremely, extremely long email. I'll read parts of it. I got a bunch of emails, but I'm, I was traveling so I couldn't really print anything so this would be the easiest for me to, to read just to skip around it's a very nice email now listen to this it's written sent by making sure to stay anonymous at gmail.com making sure to stay anonymous at gmail he's worried I was going to say his name dear Rebelli, I know you're not going to read this because it's very long the emails you read every day are truly inspiring. I'm sure there are many more that you don't make that don't make the cut and you read at the sheer. Like other writers, I feel that the only way I can show my hakaras hatoyf to you and all who make the sheer happen is to let you know what the sheer means to me. Some background info. I am I grew up from and attended Yeshiva for four years after high school. Got married, moved away from Yeshiva. The plan was to only do this. Blah, blah, blah. I went to graduate school. And he had Chavrusa once a week, which quickly faded. Rabbi said, after this email, after I read this email, so I need some guys that are still in Koilo, still Rabbanim, sending in emails. We got to mix it up a little bit. So he goes on to say that he's a shtickle depressed, and he had some suicidal thoughts. Fast forward about a year ago, on our 15th anniversary, my wife decided she wanted to separate. I can't blame her. The kids are, I told her I didn't want to be from anymore, not because I was angry with Hashem, but because something I had to give, I could no longer take the pressure. I thought I was giving it all. I felt that I was, I got nothing in return, no enjoyment from Torah, mitzvahs, no financial success, no social life. Although I live in a large firm community, it was not part of it, blah, blah, blah. Hold long. I'm talking about the longest email I've ever received. Ended up renting a room in a non firm neighborhood and began my new life, which consisted of spending most of my waking hours at various bars. I was drinking heavily. There were nights I drove myself home only to have a shem to think that I didn't kill myself or someone else. After a few short months, I started to think about becoming from again. It was not an easy decision. The kids are, he rented a house next door to, to his therapist, his tremendous help, blah, blah, blah. Made a connection with the Rav, made more friends in those few weeks than he made in 15 years. Okay, he got a full-time job in the profession, although he's not crazy about it, but he's very, very happy. Da, da, da. Okay, now, here is where you come in. Now I'm going to go slow because it's about me. I saw the ad on Yeshiva World for the free Gemara. This is where Yossi Klein starts crying. And decided to try it out beginning with Sukkah. I'm not someone who does well with consistency, so I was not sure how long I would stick with it. I've tried that before, but never made it more than a couple of days. 
I've never been, how many times have you spoken to people and they say the exact same thing? Oh, I gotta make this straight, sorry guys. Hold on, you could always put a sock under here and it could work, Guns fine. There you go, okay, that's too much. Okay. Yeah, you know those people, you talk to them about that feeling, they said, yeah, I tried it 10 times and every time it lasted for three days. Okay, so he says, there were many mornings over the years when I said Moida Ani, but really wasn't sure. I was thankful for being alive. One morning, a few days into the shir, I realized I was actually thankful to wake up because I had the shir to look forward to. I try to watch the shir before work every morning, but sometimes I run out of time. When this happens, I feel a contradictory feeling. On the one hand, I feel sad I didn't finish. On the other hand, it gives me something to look forward to when I'm finished working. Kitzer, I was so excited to go out today and buy volume two of Sukkah. Words cannot describe the Akkar I have towards you and all those who make the sheer possible. And there's many of them who make the sheer possible. Shkoyach to all of you. I hope I continue learning and that it continues to brighten my days. Even if Chas Vishalom, I stop doing the daf, I'll forever be grateful to you for the fire you lit under me, the time and the time I stuck it through. I can honestly say that in the past month or so, since I started with your shir, I've not thought about suicide, and this is by far the longest streak in the past 15 years. See, we're saving people from suicide, bringing people back to tshuva, and we also do a little learning. And he goes on to say, his civil divorce is on Friday, and he's, not, he's sure that the reason he's not stressing too much is because of the shir. Hells Baruch Hashem, my divorce is amicable, and we get along. Girl, great to my wife, I have two beautiful children. So, and this is his lashon. B'sach hakol. I want to say, thank you, thank you, thank you, Mazlov and the Chasana, sincerely anonymous. P.S. You have no choice but to keep this anonymous as you created this account just for this email. So Yishkoyach, everything should go well, should have a refuah, nafshi, and ruchni, and everything, and we should finish Shas together, Be'ezer Hashem Yisborach. So here we are, on the Chofches on the on the bottom, how do you know that you're supposed to leave your sukkah, your house on sukkahs, your permanent house and go into your temporary dwelling and make that the permanent place? You're supposed to bring your kalim in there, bring your couch, your table, make a geschmack. The Tano Rabbanon, Teshu Kain Teduru, you should. Live in your sukkah as you live in your house. And from here we learn. All seven days, this becomes your house. For instance, you have beautiful silver dishes. Bring them into the sukkah. You have nice blankets, pillows. Don't bring the cheap stuff in the sukkah. Bring the geschmack of things in there. And you eat regularly. You spatsir in the sukkah. Somebody wrote an email to explain why people walk back and forth. I forgot the joke. It was a good one. And you should learn Torah in the sukkah. Mark, how crooked is the YouTube? It's the whole table goes like this. It's pretty crooked. The boys say, tomorrow, Shever Brachas by the Oilam is going to be a beautiful thing. I heard there's two sushi chefs and this carving stations and there's unbelievable amounts of wine. Geschmack Entertainment, we're not going to tell you what it is. Over 200 people registered already. Please come. I'd love to meet you. Bemet. Seriously, for me. Do it for me. I want to meet you. It's not about me. It's going to be about the Chassan and Kala. But I personally would like to see you. Especially those shy guys that are, they call themselves loners and they're not social and they have anxiety, all that. Come on over, we got to meet. Um, it's at Zemmer Hall in Borough Park. Please sign up. It's open to women. We already have, I think, two tables of women that want to say hello to my wife and daughter. I think she's going to be there, hopefully. And daughter-in-law, the new daughter. Okay, be there and 
will be a beautiful event. Uh, where are we holding? Fine. So you learn in the sukkah, and he has the Gemara of Omar Rabba, Mikro Umisno Bimetal Alto. Okay, to learn a little Chumash, a Mishnayis, it's a good. But to learn Gemara, to learn something heavy, Bar Mimetal Alto. You need, you need the air conditioner, you need the extender, you need, you need, you need Archavas Hadas. When you learn Torah, when you learn Gemara, you have to think. And sometimes in the sukkah, it's not that comfortable. So you want to be in your learning office where we typically learn? No. says, If you're going to chazer over things that you already know, then you can do that in the sukkah. You don't have to use your head that much. If you're, if you're learning it for the first time, Eon, the Gemara says the word Eon, we have to use your seichel. And, and the sukkah doesn't provide you that kind of comfort, so you go into your house. Ki ha de rava ve rami bar chama. So rava and rami bar chama, we know, had the same father-in-law, but they were not brother-in-laws. How's that possible? Because they both married Rav Chizda's daughter. If you remember that Gemara, rava said, I know she said, I'm going to marry both of you. So Rav said, please, I want to be last. Because he knew what that meant. One of them is going to have to die in order to marry her. So Rav and Bacham married her first. He was Nifter. And then Rav married her. So they were never actually brother-in-laws. They just had the same father-in-law. When they sat in front of their father-in-law of Chizda, Adadi, they would fly through the Gemara. So first they would go through it quickly. And then they would look into the Svara. We had this Gemara a number of times, especially from Rava. I forgot the exact Lashon, like Kaidam Ligrois, Vahadam Lisbar, something like that, where I like to point out to people that you should probably learn through Shas before you start doing heavy, heavy Eon. Not so much like the Shita today in the Yeshivas, but it makes sense to like, know it on a basic level, and then go into deep. A lot of times in yeshiva, we would spend hours and hours and, and, and breaking our heads, what's the shot in this word, and then only to turn the page, and the Gemara had all discussion about it. Anyway, says the Gemara, Omar Rava. Money, mishtiyo We're talking about the covet of the sukkah. What are you allowed to bring into the sukkah? What can't you not bring into the sukkah? A lot of people are familiar with the halacha that you shouldn't bring in pots into the sukkah. And it comes from this very Gemara. You can bring in cups for drinking. Money, michla, bar, memitalalto. But food, where, like plates, bowls, not in the sukkah. Meaning, if they're dirty, it doesn't belong in the sukkah. Chatzba, v'shachel, jug, a pail, bar, memitalalto. It's not something that you would bring into your dining room. Who brings in a pail into a dining room? Right? It's not... Nobody, you leave that in the bathroom. You leave that somewhere else. Don't bring it into the sukkah. Sukkah you have to treat with covet. You know what else you don't bring into the sukkah? Lashon Hara. You don't bring Lashon Hara into the sukkah. This, certain things you don't... I mean, you don't bring Lashon Hara anywhere. But you've got to be really careful not to talk, talk that you, in such a college that place. But a candle could be in a sukkah. And some say, out of the sukkah. If it's exactly seven by seven sukkah, so small, and that you're concerned that the small candle is going to burn your whole sukkah down, then it's not appropriate for the sukkah. Get it out. That's according to Taisis Pshat. Yorduk Shamim. If it's raining, tana mishetisra When the mission says that your food starts spoiling, what does it mean? Shall greasen. This is a very interesting person, I believe. This is a guy that, for some strange reason, eats bean porridge. He's such a not mefunik that he eats bean porridge, but he, he a little bit of rain bothers him in his bean porridge. It's chazer. But anyway, the point is that it's such a sensitive food. 
I'm just saying this guy has other problems. If he's eating bean porridge, Shem Yirachem. Shem Yirachem. So, you know, I once made fun of the guys that eat uh, whole wheat bread. So, a certain individual flew in from California to say Mazel Tov. And what did he bring me? His bread, because he wanted to show me, hey, don't make fun of this kind of bread. It's delicious. It actually was. But you don't have to go that far. Pliny, you know where you are. You're not going to bring me next time bean porridge. Abaya have a koyosef kamei the Rabbi Yosef in Tel Alto. Abaya was sitting in front of his famous Rabbi Rabbi Yosef. Inside the sukkah, Noshav Zika, the winds are blowing, we call Maisi Tzivasa. So Tzivasa is, you know, the needles and the leaves, something's falling into his food. Oh my Lord, Rabbi Yosef, Panuli Mori Meach, get me out of here. I need to leave. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not enough rain. It has to spoil the food. A couple of needles in the food is not gonna, it's not the end of the world. I'm a mafunik, I'm a istinus. So kimi It's as if, it's as if my food is spoiling. So we actually learned in Psachim. The Rav Yosef, we know that he was blind. And I believe the Ben Yoda explained over there that in Psachim he said, I have three problems. I'm a Kaisen. Because the Gemara says, if somebody's a Kaisen, somebody that's an Istanis, what's the third one? I don't remember anymore. Chayov it says Chayim. It's not good. His life is not a life. He's always upset. He's always, he has sensory issues. He's, he's constantly... Everything bothers him. So the Ben Yod, I believe, explains over there because Rav Yosef was blind. So everything was, you know, his, every, his sensories were very, he's very sensitive to everything. Okay. So Mela, a few leaves that fell into the, to the food or uh, hit him on the head. It's like for anybody else, like his food getting spoiled. Get me out of here. I'm a mitzvah. I want to leave the sukkah. Torah Baran. He was in the middle of eating the sukkah and it started to rain. So he left the sukkah. So we have this all the time, right? It starts raining, so we leave. Then we check to see if it's still raining. What is the Allah? So the Gemara says, once you leave, you're not to go back. You can finish what you're doing and that's it. We're not matriach, you have to keep on going back forth, checking the rain. Now certainly the Hasidim who sit in the rain, I'm sure if they do go out, because it's so, the rain is so hard, I'm sure they're going to be looking for the, the opportunity to jump back into the sukkah. That's probably the right thing to do, but you're not going to No tircha, don't worry about it, finish your meal inside the house. Another Allah You're sleeping in the sukkah of Yorad. And it started to rain, so you got out of there. You don't have to go back until it becomes light. Yeor with the aleph, or iboilu at sheyeor with the ayin. Is that what the Gemara really meant to print and to say? With a aleph, or is it with the ayin? In other words, is it until he wakes up? Or does it mean until it becomes light? Which one is it? It's, it? it sounds the same, but maybe there's a printing error along the way. Maybe it makes more sense that it has nothing to do with the light outside. It has to do with how he gets up. If he gets up and he's good to go, let him go back into the sukkah. I'm not matriach him to wake up in the middle of his sleep. Oh! Givaldika Maiser Abhoisa. Reb Shalom Shvadron, when he's very old and he already had a stroke, so one of his enoklach tried to wake him up, couldn't get him up. He was weak, he was sleeping, he's sleeping tight. So Rav Shalom daughter saw it, and she said, let me take care of it. And she went over to him and she said, Tate, it's so is my Kriyashma. And he jumped out of his bed as if nothing. Achiyeyer. Sometimes, even a person in such a matzav, his whole life, he's so scared, chas v'shalom to mizman kriyashma, that, and she knew it. She knew, she knew what, what, how to get her dad out of bed. 
or Achiyer, is it until he wakes up and then he's to go back into the sukkah, or is it when the light goes on? Toshma Achiyer, Viyala Amud Shachar, it says two things that the lights go on, the sun comes out, Viyala Amud Shachar. But it's the same thing, no? Tarti, it's two different times. One is Amud Shachar, it's way before net, and the other one is net. So which one is it? So we need two things here. We need that he should wake up, but it also needs to be Amud Shachar. In other words, if a person wakes up at three in the morning, he's not going to go back into the sukkah. But if he wakes up at five thirty-seven, whenever the sikin is, or should not be sikin, Amud Shachar, and the, you have those two things. First of all, it's Amud Shachar, and he's up. So let's say Amud Shachar is at five o'clock, right? And he wakes up at 6 o'clock, so he should go into the sukkah at 6 o'clock. It's not mechuyif to go into the sukkah at 5 o'clock just because it's Amur HaShachar. At the same time, if he wakes up at 4 o'clock, he's also not mechuyif to go into the sukkah because he only woke up and it's still in the middle of the night and it's not Amur HaShachar. So you need two things together. You need Amur HaShachar and you need to wake up. When you have those two things, yeyer and yeyer, ayin and aleph, then you go back into the sukkah. Moshe l'madav adayim e'boilu. Mishavach l'mi. So the Mishnah says, when it rains on Sukkot, it's as if a servant came to give the master a pitcher of water and he spilled it on him. Who spilled on who? So, I mean, the Pashtas was, that that's how we read it, it's as if the master spills it on the servant. And he says, I don't want your water. I don't want you in the Masukkah. I don't want you to be kind. I said, mention the guy. It's good for you guys to be in the Sukkah because... It lessens the din, the harshness of the din. And I don't want you in the sukkah. I don't want you to have that schus of, of being, of, of, of receiving that hamtaka sadin. But either way, and now let's say, let's say it's the opposite. So if it's the opposite, so the servant comes and he's about to give his master some water. And instead of giving him water, he spills it in his face. In other words, Klai Yisrael, not that they brought the rain, but that they're showing us, Baruch Hu, we don't care about you. We're not making the mitzvahs like we're supposed to, unfortunately. We're like spitting in like Hashem's face, so to speak. It's a marshal. So what does Hashem do? Hashem says, okay, I don't need you either. Get out of my sukkah. Toshma. So who spilled it on who? What's the marshal? The sign Yishavach Rabbi Kitun al Panov. It says Mufurish. Rabbi spilled it on the servant. And he said, I don't want you to be my servant anymore. Here's a goodbye present. Splash in the face. Get out. So that's what Akush Baruch is doing to us. Very, very sad. One year in Eretz Yisrael. The first, first rain of the entire season. You know how it doesn't rain the whole summer. The first rain was a minute before Kiddush. On Sukkot. Now that's... A slap in the face. That's like, get out. You remember Mati? Four or five years ago. Uh, everybody, everybody knows that. In Ramat B'Chemesh, I don't know if you lived in other Ramat B'Chemesh, rain, as we were about to start Kiddush, we didn't even get to do Kiddush, back into the house. The first rain of the season. Terrible. Gotta, gotta take the hint sometimes. When there's a solar eclipse, so loika is lashon of likui of it's diminished. So the sun is not as strong. Simin ra kula. It's a bad omen. It's a bad simin to the whole world. Now they discuss. Everybody discusses because it's on a cycle. It's going to happen. We know exactly when there's going to be a solar eclipse. Nevertheless. There's certain times, like, like you could say, oh, the night is bad for this, it's go, good for that. Certain times of the year, of, of, of the creation of every, every few years, where it's a bad time. It, there's a bad sim in, in the world going on at that kufa. We, not that it happened because, like a rain, all of a sudden started raining on a Tuesday afternoon. Okay, we could look in the calendar, we know exactly when the solar eclipse is going to happen, but that is a sim around. Moshe Lamad Dovah it's a Marshall and Melchbos of Adam, Shah Sudala Vadov, 
a king made a big feast, Veniach Panos Lufneim, he put a, a, a light, Kwas Alein, then he got upset, Vomer Lavdoi, and he told his servant, Toil Panos Mivneim, Boishim Bechoyshech, take away the light, put them in the dark, because this diminished light in the world, because Baruch was Kabyachal upset at, at, at the world. Tanya Rimei Oimer Kozman Shemoyers Loikin. When the luminaries, their loiko, they're diminished. Simen ra'al the soyneim shal Yisrael. We know soyneim shal Yisrael. The enemies of Klai Yisrael is always uh, a nice lashon. It means Klai Yisrael. It's a bad simen for Klai Yisrael. Nei, shemulumodim b'makuseyim. Klai Yisrael suffers and suffers and suffers from the creation of our nation. We've always been suffering, Rahman Islam. And it's a simon that if there's something bad gonna ha- that's going to happen, it's loyal or going to happen to the quote unquote enemies of Klai Yisrael because there's so malumid be makois. Marshal, the soifer shabal be sasefer utsu biyadai. The Rebbe comes to class with a whip in his hand. Mi doyek. Mi shirogel lilkois b'chol yoyim v'yoyim hu doyek. That student that's going to chap zetz, and he, every day he chaps his zetz from his Rebbe, he knows that he's about to chap his zetz. When I learned in Yeshivik Tanem Panovich, I learned by Remicha Yudolevkevich. There was two shiurim. There was Remicha Yudolevkevich said one shir, and um, Rav Shteyman, Zuchon Levrocha, said the, uh, the parallel shir. Everybody wanted to get into Remicha Yudolevkevich's shir because he was considered the better Rebbe, I should say. Fine. Every single day, almost, in the middle of the year, he would say, Nu Elio Stefanski, Mapshat Batoisvis, every day without fail. And every day I failed him, and he would just go on every day. And, and you know when he didn't ask me? When I knew it. He knew when I knew it, and he wouldn't ask me. Anyway, so this, I used to get a Zetz from him, uh, not a real Zetz, but a uh, a busha every day. No, Elio Stefan. I was I was three years younger than everybody else. I had an excuse, but not a good one. And um, when he started saying no, I knew right away it was me. So this is me doyeg. Who gets worried when his rebbe pulls out the whip? Me shiragi lilko is because yeah, I'm the guy that gets whipped every day. The Masha says a better pshat. Masha says that the Rebbe whips the one that has the most potential, and Klai Yisrael has the most potential. They have the Torah, they should be using the Torah for the right thing, and they're not. That's why they, they deserve to, to get whipped. We are doing our best by doing Daf Yoymi, etc. So Baruch Hashem. Torah Baruch. When there's a solar eclipse... Yeah, 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 I was hinting to that. I, I thought some Chacham is going to say that. No, I wasn't. I got whipped because he knew I wasn't prepared well. He saw my face. He was such a chacham, I'm serious. And then I learned that he looks at my face to see what I know. So I would do this whole reverse, reverse poker face and wanting him to ask me, new Elio, and then I'm going to show him I know my stuff. And he wouldn't ask me. He was, he was an tr- unbelievable mechanic. Unbelievable. Raboy it's Kishmak stuff. Thanks for keeping me up here. Anybody else? Israel Helper and Shalom Aleichem. Ashmali Bernard is on. Let me just go real quickly through here. I almost left the meeting by mistake. That would have been funny. Mark Struhl. Lemmer is on. Jonathan Austin, Shalom Aleichem. You're still in America? Yeah, okay, great. Weiter. Okay, here we go. Total Rabban. By the way, if you turn to the Chof Tesom Beis, not so long. Torah Rabban. B'zman she'acham aloyka. When does a solar eclipse? Simen raloy b'dike chavim. It's a bad sign for the guy. For those who worship the stars. Levana loyka. But the moon, if there's a, an eclipse of the moon, simen raloy b'dike chavim. Yisrael. Then it's a bad sign for Klai Yisrael. Why? B'bnei she Yisrael manim le levana. Because Klai Yisrael is into the moon. We go, our year is 354 days a year. And their year is 365 days. 
Like a Mizrach, if the eclipse happens in the east, Simurali Yosha Mizrach, then it's not good for the people in the, in the east. Bemairov, Simurali Yosha Mairov. Bemzer Akiv, it's smack in the middle. Simurali Koloy Lim Kuloy. Then it's a bad sign for the entire world. Pun of them in the Da'am, if the sun is redder, Cherubaloylo, it's going to be war. Lesak, if it's darker, Chitzi Rav Barmaloylo, like a face of a person who's in. Who has hunger pangs, his face turns dark, so it's a sign of famine. Luzu luzu, if it's dark red, so interesting. You would think knisasai means in the morning, but knisasai means at night when the sun goes down. Because it's leaving, it has the whole night now. So it's going to take time for the bad stuff to happen. But when it comes up in the morning, I'm basing this on Rashi. Rashi says this. The bad stuff is happening quickly. There's a story about the Chavetz Chaim that somebody came to get a bracha from him and he asked him, where are you from? No, no. And then the guy says, you know, in Asia somewhere, there was a tremendous tsunami or I, I don't remember what, like some sort of, um, uh, what do you call them? The, no, how do you say it in English? Ridata Dama. No, I'm, everybody knows what I'm talking about. Earthquake. Earthquake, tremendous earthquake, 100,000 people died, whatever it was. So the Chavetz Chaim said, Oy vey, oy vey, he's very, very upset. And he says, that's a simen raf eklai Yisrael. If this is what happens to, to the goyim in some other place, it's a very, very bad sign that there's going to be something terrible, terrible tragedies happening to Klai Yisrael. Maybe he was referring to World War II, I don't know. But he was very, very upset about the Shmuel. It's not something you say, oh, it happened to them over there at the other side of the world. It's a simon for Klai Yisrael to wake up and smell the coffee. Says the Gemara. It's the opposite. That if this eclipse is at the end of the day, then it's going to happen quickly. And if it's in the beginning of the day, then it's going to take time. It's Malach also gets a Zet. is referring to the Malach of Mitzrayim. But when Klai Yisrael does a Kushbarchu's Ratzain, Kushbarchu's will, then they have no fear. They shouldn't have fear. Shenemar. Koyamar Hashem. El Derech Hagoyim Al Tumadu. Don't learn from the Goyim. Don't fear the signs from heaven. They should fear all these things. The Goyim should fear. So this is interesting. This we have to understand. If the solar eclipse is on a cycle, so what does this mean? Because of these four things, that's why we have the eclipse. I'll have Bezdin Shemais on somebody Choshev like the head of the Bezdin who dies, and they don't give him the proper eulogies, the, the proper espadin. Uh, a married, she was already, she had a uh, Erusin, the time of the Gemara that's like, like married. She's Eishasish. And somebody's raping her and nobody cares. Ve'emu yishiyelo. Ve'al mishkav zochur. Ve'al mishkav zochur. Ashni achim shenishbach domam ke'achot. On two brothers who were killed at the same time. That's what, these are terrible, terrible things that cause liko yacham. Ushvalar bodvar mo'iris likim. The luminaries of the world. Plaster on those who write fake stories. 
They write, they, they forge, they forge documents. Basically, same idea, false testimony. And bringing up the smaller animals like sheep and goats in Eretz Yisrael because they destroy the properties. And cutting down perfectly good trees. We must see Rashi here. I think there's an amazing Rashi. Three lines from the bottom. Even if you own these trees, says Rashi. Because you are destroying something perfectly good. It looks as if you're kicking HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And on his bracha, that he's mashpia on us with his good. I mean, it's amazing if you think about it. Taking a tree, inanimate object, really, I mean, it doesn't have much uh, seichel or anything, and you destroy it, you're, you're, you're kicking Akash Baruch Hu. You're showing, I don't care about Akash Baruch Hu's beauty in this world. And what about if you destroy another human being that's mamish? Has all the beauty of Akash Baruch Hu in it, everything, his seichel and the, everything. You do that, Allah is coming with no? Think? But it's, it's unbelievable. If you think about it, you have to take a second to think about this. Akash Baruch Hu created a beautiful thing in this world, a beautiful tree, flowers and this and that. And you cut it down, chop it down for no reason. You own it, but for no reason, you're boyed by Akash Baruch Hu. Unbelievable. There's four reasons why you lose your property. For leaving a, a document that somebody already, you lent money and the guy paid you back and you just, you, you keep the document, it's dangerous, you might, you might be Tevayim again. And people who lend money for interest. Dav Chof Tesom Beis, sponsored by the MD White Hillam Group, for all those who need Shiduchim, Refus, and Yeshuas. Please join Tillam.8mindav.com. Va'al Shahoyo Sipek Biyodom Limchois Veloy Michu. Just had a Maisa, I was Moicha, somebody in Shul, and I got destroyed for it. Probably not a good idea anymore to be moicha. But the Gemara says if somebody if somebody has the ability, and look at Rashi here. Because they're wealthy. If you have power and you don't use your power to be moicha, and say, what you're doing is wrong, you're being over Avera, so you lose your money, you lose everything you have. It's interesting, no, because people that are not aware of the halacha of mecha, okay, it, it might not apply today. This halacha, you, you know, you can't be al-techachletz, etc. But you just ask a regular American person, you say, why is it your business to tell somebody else that he's over Avera? Who are you to tell him? Mind your own business. You're disgusting for going over to somebody and saying, hey, you're being over here. But it's not true. This is a halacha that you have to be moicha. If your words will be listened to, you have to be moicha. So you have to know how to do it in the proper way. And da, da, da. Maybe uh, one should not scream across the entire shul at somebody else from side to side. But there's an in to be moicha. Anyway, if we use, I'm saying, we if we just fell down from the moon and we don't know anything about the Torah, it's, oh, it's, not the, it's not the right thing. You just keep on walking, pretend it never happened. We just saw that if somebody, uh, Naira Marasa, this is, okay, that, that's a real saying, just an Avera, any Avera, whatever it is. At the end of the day, this should be an Indian to Mecha. Probably today it's not a good idea. Omar Rab. There's four reasons why, oh, sorry, skip. At these um, appeals, they scream out $5,000. And then, so that everybody thinks they're going to give. 
and they're grace bal and at the end they don't give it. That's a terrible thing. Omar Rab. There are four reasons why people lose their money. Al when they don't pay their employees. So they pay them late. They don't pay them at all. They delegate things to their friends. Being about Gaiva. That guy, that Gaiva de Leo guy, we gotta talk to him. The gases of Ruach can I get cool on? The worst of the worst is Gaiva. But if a person is humble, the, the humble people are going to inherit the land and they're going to have a nice tainug with a lot of peace. In the second paragraph, we finished two broken You know what that means? We only have like 27 days left. <laughs> And then we go to Masechtas Beitza. Gewaldik. Oh. And that brings up Yuma. I miss Yuma. And I miss Sukkah. We should enjoy, Rabbi we should enjoy every minute. Every minute. We don't always get these kind of Masechtas. I'm telling you, it's unbelievable. Says the Mishnah, Lulav Agozel. What is a Lulav? I have a picture in case you don't know what it is. So, it comes off a palm tree. Right over here, you're looking at $15,000 worth of dates. I like to say it's time to throw it out there. This, in fact, used to be a lulav. If you look at this. This is a lulav that opened up. The lulav that we use is the one that looks like an arrow. This guy right over here. And it's made out of these leaves that we see, we see over here. It has a spine, has a shidro, and off the middle spine is one leaf called the tumus, and it goes all the way to the top. And then you have a bunch of leaves on the side. Each leaf is a double leaf. You could open it up and you make a double in case you never opened up your lulav and you never held a lulav, so I'm telling you what it is. So if you stole the lulav, so it's not lochem. The Torah says you have to have your own and you stole it. So you're not yoitza. Toysis asks, what about mitzvah bo ba'averu? We're going to discuss. V'hayovesh. And if it's dry. So according to Toysis, if you just touch it with your finger and it falls apart, that's yovesh. Now, the issue is, the rabbit brings up an issue. He doesn't understand Toysis so well. He says, I've never seen a lulav really. A lot of people have lulavim, you know, they, they put it in their uh, strafas chametz. Have you ever gone like this to a lulav and it fell apart? Ask the raven. It doesn't usually happen. You can have a lulav for 10 years, it doesn't happen. So he just says that most of the leaves became extremely dry. You see, they're white, dry. Okay, here you have a lulav that only the middle one is dry. That's the tumus, and that's also puzzle. But he says that if all the leaves are dry and the center one, the tumus, is nice and not dry, kosher. Okay. Fine. So here's your typical lulav ayavish, according to the Ravid, dried up lulav. Okay, we don't have to go through this sheet. Though. Okay, great. Next. Shel Asherah. Asherah is a lulav that they used for Avodah Zorah. It itself was a shtik Avodah Zorah. V'shel irani dachas. Guess what, Rabbi Yisai? Irani dachas is in this week's parasha. Irani dachas is a city that 51% of the people are over Avodah Zorah. So we destroy everything in the city. The lulav tree is sitting and waiting to be destroyed. So call a sar of kesar of dami. And then you have a problem of ketusei mechtas In other words, as we're going to learn, a lulav has to be three tfachim plus one tfach, four tfachim. 
So if, if you are about to burn it, then it's as if it's burnt. So what you're holding in your hand is not four tfachim. What you're holding in your hand is a bunch of ashes. It doesn't have four tfachim. It's missing from the shear of four tfachim. Anything since it's about to be burnt, it is burnt halachically. So it's missing from the shear. Anything that's burnt, ashes, is not a shear. We even said a human body that's ashes doesn't even give off tumma. So it certainly doesn't have a shear. If the tip broke off, so according to the Ravid, it means the spine. We have a three-way machlaikis here. You see, this is the, the middle one all the way to the top, but here's the spine. The spine got cut off. Uh, you have a different different sheet over here. It's most of the center, the tumus here. This is the tumus, and it got cut off. Ruba is missing. According to the Ritva and the Ran, it's literally the tip of the tumus is missing. You could see right over here, right over here, got cut off. It was supposed to go up a little bit, got cut off the top. And according to another pshat and Taisvis, each leaf got snipped off, most of them. Okay, anyway, he keeps on going. <laughs> More pshat them. There's another pshat in Taisvis. Another pshat in the Balaitor that the, the, the top guys over here got cut off, snipped right over here. Ooh. I don't even know what this is. This I didn't see yet. I'll see it with you. Niktam Roish according to the tour. Kids is a lot of Pshatim. Two, two of them on the side over here. All right. Next. Nifritsu Olav. Like a broom. They, the, the leaves came off the Lulav. And he put them back. Possible. Nifru the Olav. But if the leaves are still attached to the Lulav. Just they separated kosher, then it's kosher. It's not kosher until you tie it down. You have to tie it just like so, so that they're together and not apart. Sine hair barzel is here. Sine hair barzel is a funny type of lulav that grows in hair barzel, and as you see, they don't reach the bottom of the, the, the leaf on top of them. So these leaves are short. Instead of, go, instead of having leaves, you know, like we have a little of every half an inch, there's another leaf over here, there's a big separation between leaf and leaf. It's kosher. Not the best, but it's kosher. So, we're going to see that a lulav has to have three tfachim. So it's the same size as the hadas narava, plus a tefach in order for the shaking to occur. The shaking we're also going to get into, we know, we shake to all four directions of the world, and up and down to correspond to the, to the bad winds, and etc. Says the Gemara, Kapasik Vitani. Look at the passage. The first day of Sukkot, or in America, the first two days. But the first day of Sukkot is the Doiraisa. In the Beis Hamikdash, they took the, the Lul of an Esrik every single day, but we don't have a Beis Hamikdash. So, Midoiraisa is only one day. Chum said, do it every day. We do it in Shachris to commemorate the Beis Hamikdash. But in the Mishnah, it doesn't differentiate between the first day and the second day. The first part of Yontav, the second part of Yontav. Lashem Yom Biyom Tov Rishon, Lashem Yom Tov Shani. Bishlem Yavesh, Hadar Biyin on Veleke. If it's dry, it's not part of Hadar. Elagazul, but why can't you use a stolen lulav as the Gemara? Bishlem Yom Tov Rishon. The Pasik says, When? When does it have to be yours? It says specifically, 
So this whole idea that you can't take a stolen lulav is only beyond the Vrishan. Shalom Aleichem, Rav Pesach Kahana. Shalom Aleichem. I got your email. Givaldi. Hello. Beyond of Shaini, am I loy? What's wrong with using a stolen lulav? I already mentioned before, there's a problem. Mitzvah Havaba Avera to be discussed. Alright? It's not a problem of Lochem. The problem is Mitzvah. Habo ba'averu, like we start out shas with the whole idea of mitzvah ba'averu and brachas, and we have a problem of mitzvah ba'averu. You can't. It's uh, it's not mevarach. It's minay. It's it's you come to Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Oh, shalki shalom and tzvaysa tzivanu, and you just stole somebody's lulav. It makes no sense. You can't do something like that. Rabbi Yisai have a gavaldika day or night, and be'ezer Hashem. If you're in New York, hope to see you tomorrow. At Zemmer Hall, I think it's at 7 o'clock. I might come a little early if you want to meet me there as well. I'll try to come as early as possible. The bring with the Oilam. And uh, if you're not there, it's also okay. If you live in a different country, it's Givaldic. I'll see you then. Have a wonderful day. Rebelli, guys are asking uh, what, if you know what your schedule is Friday to share. No, Friday. Okay, based on what my schedule is today, I found out what I'm doing today a half hour ago. So how do I know what I'm doing on Friday? Okay, Friday. Let's think about Friday. No, I'm gonna be in. I'm gonna be in Borough Park Friday. What's the schedule? I don't know. When does the other want to get together on Friday? Friday, Ellie Dykeman and the Israel Goldstein are in charge of Borough Park. They'll, they'll, they'll decide what it is and where it is.